wolf on the run. I scramble over to Ivan and he gives me a look that says, you're the best, Bob. I thought you were a goner, I say, licking some banana goo off his chin. Me too. Ivan seems a little dazed. His eyelashes are white with dust. What happened anyway? Tornado. Ruby okay? Kenyani? Julia? George? Haven't seen Julia or George yet. Kenyani's over there carrying on. A paramedic holding a box of medical equipment approaches us nervously. I've got this, calls a woman. A woman I recognize as one of the park veterinarians. The paramedic looks happy to step aside. The vet gently put, gently but firmly pushes me out of the way. I'll be back, I tell Ivan. I run to Kenyani. He's good, totally good. The look of joy in her eyes makes me want to give her an affectionate nose nudge. Almost. From there, I join Ruby and Maya. I was so scared, Bob, Ruby whispers. Me too, I admit. Me too. But he's fine, I promise. We watch a pair of otters dart past, chased by a guy with a net. One of the firefighters who had been clearing debris yells, We're clear here. No sign of other victims. Sarah closes her eyes and I can smell her relieved tears. While Maya listens to her walkie-talkie trying to take stock of the damage to the park, Officer Williams' police radio hisses and crackles with a new problem, new flooding, and new dire predictions. Copy that, she says into her radio. Even with the chaos and noise, I'm close enough to the radio to catch the tinning sound of frantic barking. We've got a unit reporting the animal shelter down the streets flooding, Officer, Officer William says. Also, we've got trailer park damage on 12th Street, an oak down at Nelson Avenue blocking traffic, and a big rig overturned near the fairgrounds. And that's just for starters. Out of the corner of my eye, I notice something airborne. It's graceful and bold, like a huge wingless bird. The crowd gasps. It's Kimu. He lands on the hood of the Officer Williams squad car. His eyes are glazed, his coat wet and shimmering. We've got a 1091 here, Officer Williams whispers into her receiver. Confirmed. Seems there's a wolf on top of my vehicle. Slowly she reaches for the pistol on her hip. Please advise. Shots fired. Several officers raise their guns. The tranquilizer dart guy takes aim too. No, Maya yells. No guns. Camus blinks, eyes darting right and left, then leaps off the car with such grace and speed it's like he owns the wind. Two shots ring out. Silence follows. Was he hit? Someone asks. Maya closes her eyes. I sure hope not. I sure hope so, someone else says. Jungle. As I watched that leap, watch Kimu fly, I didn't know what to think. Part of me was like, go for it, dude. And the other part of me was thinking, it's a jungle out there. A situation. Officer Williams climbs onto a picnic table. Someone hands her a megaphone so she can be heard over the din. Folks, she yells, listen up. We've got a handful. We've got a handful of animal control workers coming over, but several roads are already flooded. And the weather guys are saying Gus is gonna take his sweet time. Meantime, park supervisors call in for more help, but only if your workers can get here safely. The unmistakable roar of a big cat rolls over us like slow thunder. Any more trank guns? Officer William asks the park director who's just arrived. Three in reserve. She answers, Nets? We have a dozen. Okay then. Officer Williams' radio crackles. I can hear more shouting, more barking. Shelter's flooding, she says. Yeah, that's happened there before, the director says. Usually just a foot or two of water. Okay, public safety is where we start. Officer Williams wipes rain from her forehead. 
We need to get the word out that these animals are on the loose. Of course, says the director. We have protocols in place, but we need to be careful how we word this. People might overreact. Might. Ma'am, the firefighter interrupts. I see a python in my backyard. I'm sure gonna overreact. First things first, says Officer Williams. Triage in the main office. Check wreckage for any survivors, human or animal. Fan out with trank guns. Get an inventory on how many animals are loose. I wonder how it's possible that Officer Williams can seem so composed. The air reeks with fear from animals, bird, birds, people, from me. And yet she doesn't seem worried about herself, just other people. Weird, the way some humans stick their necks out for others. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense, does it? Again, the crackle, the hiss, the barking. My ears perk up for a minute. Was that a familiar voice? Maybe someone I know is in the slammer. I'm going to the shelter at the ele elementary school, Sarah says. Her hands are trembling, but her voice is firm. To look for George and Julia, just in case. She strokes my head and I'm happy to let her. I wonder if I should tag along with her, see if I can help out. Now that I know Ivan and Ruby are safe. Hiss, crackle, meow, bark. I hear it again. My ears go alert, my body goes rigid. No, it's impossible. Never. Some barks you never forget one place. I know what I have to do. Despite the turmoil all around me, the noises, the smells, the fear, the confused animals, the frantic animals, despite my worry about Julia and George, I know there's one place I need to be. A split second. I want to tell Ivan and Ruby, but Ivan is still being poked at, poked at by the rhymes with pet threat. Although, come to think of it, she doesn't seem like much of a threat. In a movie, she'd be one of the good guys. To my annoyance, Sarah picks me up. I hate being picked up, unless it's my idea. Then it's totally cool. Maya, she says, you let me know. First sign to George and Julia, okay? Promise, says Maya. And she places her hand on Sarah's shoulder. Humans, always with the touching. Although I kind of get it under the circumstances. You can't take Bob to the school shelter. They're not allowing any more pets. Aya points out, and the animal shelter is flooding, it sounds like. Why don't you leave him here? I'll put him in my office. He'll be safe. No way is that on my agenda. Sarah nods. Good idea. She starts to hand me over, but hesitates when she realizes Maya still has a meerkat wrapped around her neck. It's just a split, split second, but a split second is all it takes to escape when you're Bob, untamed and undaunted. On my way. Bob, Sarah cries. Grab that dog, Maya yells. I spent a good part of my life running from a certain guy named Mac and I still have my moves. I twist and spin and dip and before you can say, yes siree, Bob, they've given up. I backtrack, slip under a bench and make my way to Ruby. Ruby, I whisper. I gotta go. Something important's come up. You and Ivan see if you can't find George and Julia. I want to come, Ruby says, stomping her right foot in a huge puddle. You need to keep an eye on Ivan, I said. Make sure Kenyani doesn't drive him loco with her sobbing. I'll be back before you know it. I don't wait for an answer. I'm off in the wild into the world filled with wind and rain, with wolves and alligators, with a voice that could rip my heart in two. Romeo says, have a great day. Bye, gators.